Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Backyard Tabletop. My name is Jacob. And my name's Curtis. Sorry. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's just going to become part of our intro now, <laughs> where you have to apologize. <laughs> and my name's Curtis. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it is so good to be back with you all today. I have a little bit of a new setup here, um, rearranging my desks for maybe some more potential stuff uh, coming in the future, or maybe uh -huh. it's just for me to to just change it up. I I um I'm I'm realizing that I'm a very neutral person. I don't necessarily really care if something changes or not, and this is just something that I just did on a whim. I wouldn't say neutral. I would say passive. Yeah, I am a a passive ability, definitely. I and I love <laughs> passive abilities in games. Yep. Actually, they're like my favorite. <laughs> yep. Do you like change, Curtis? I, um, most of the time, no. Uh, but every once in a while, I just get really tired of how things are and change everything at once. <laughs> And then live with that again for the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, you know, stuff has been going on, but um, in the D&D &D community, but we're just back here. We're just going to talk about our games because that's what we like to do. Uh, we, Curtis and I just kind of like to sit here and talk about the weekly games that we uh, partake in. Curtis plays on a Friday night game. I play on a Saturday morning game. And uh, we're in two different groups. And we just like to sit down on a somewhat of a weekly basis. Uh, the, the podcast comes out every other Monday. But we just like to sit down and, and talk about our games here. So thank you so much for joining us. Today, I have a question for you, Curtis. For me? Yeah, specifically for you. No one else. No one else. Nobody else answer this. He'll come for you. <laughs> um, we've, I think we've mentioned it in passing, a, like a, a few blurps here and there, and we've never really actually sat down to talk about it specifically. What is your least favorite class in Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, that's a very different question from like your favorite class. Yeah. Exactly. We all have, I feel like we all have our favorite classes, or at least one we lean to. Um, and I think that we'll save that for a different day. I think that'll be a fun question for a different day of like top, top classes that we tend to, to lean toward. Have we not done that? I feel like we've talked about that already. I don't, I I, I feel like we've brought it up. I, I know you have said maybe in passing is like a joke or something that it was barred <laughs> that my my least favorite yeah um do you have one do you have a least favorite i mean i do there's obviously a scale um even my least favorite though i wouldn't say is like it's not like i'll never play it uh-huh it's just i i the way i tend to scale it is when i go ooh that's a cool character idea what class is it <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I find that I never have cool character ideas about like three classes. It just never <laughs> comes to me because I just don't even think about them. You That's know what interesting. I mean? So it's a little bit less about your, your least favorite and more of you're just never inspired with those classes. Yeah. And I think that's a great way of thinking of it. Because yeah, same here. I think that um, I think that Bard is still down there. You know a weird one too, which, and this is really weird because everything about the class I actually like, uh -huh. as far as like uh, um, like abilities and gameplay mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to like inspiration and role play. I just never think about playing paladins. Never think about it. Interesting, interesting. So not not, not necessarily your least favorite, but you just can't think yeah, of like. And, it, and it's it's weird because I definitely have made like paladin character ideas, mm -hmm. but it's never really stuck. It's never been something that I've been like excited to try and play. 
I've I've multi-classed into Paladin before, but I've never just played a Paladin. That's interesting. That's an interesting choice because yeah, I I know what you mean. I have definitely wanted to play a Paladin, uh, for sure. Just and I know I've played one in a one shot that you ran, um, which was really fun. It was a one shot where we all got to be. I think Sarah and I were level fifteen characters, and it oh, was oh yeah yeah yeah. That was the only Paladin I played. It, it, Curtis did a a one shot for for my wife and I. We were just we were all just kind of sitting around. Very impromptu. <laughs> it was very impromptu. Curtis was like, "You guys just want to roll some dice," and he pulled a one shot. Like he had, you have like a whole like uh, it, like one hundred one shots to run or something like that, right? For each level. I think the one I grabbed was for Cobalt Press. Right. Um, it, and it was really fun. It was a it was it it was a fairly basic concept, but it was really fun and uh for that one I played a level fifteen paladin and it was just like one turn, one smite, like fifty six damage and it was just I think like, we literally geez. rolled a D twenty and said whatever that lands on is the level we're gonna play and it yep. ended up being fifteen. Um yeah, that was really fun. I it was really fun. I, I think the third one for me and you know what? This is actually probably actually my least favorite class um, is fighter. Ooh. Oh, my fighter heart just hurt. Oh, ah. <laughs> oh, that's I, so I sad. Really, I really do think the only time I'll ever play a fighter is through multi-classing. I don't think oh, I'll wow. ever play a fighter that's just a fighter. Oh, or even wow. a fighter that's like mostly a fighter. <laughs> huh. I think at most it's going to be like, yeah, I'll take two or three levels of fighter at the so, most. Okay, so what what is your reasoning? Because I feel like like your reasoning is going to be the same as my reasoning, why it's my favorite, and it's like we're going to have two very different opinions of that. Your reason it's favorite is because it's boring? <laughs> my reason is because it's vanilla <laughs> and you can literally make it like anything you want. <laughs> no. <laughs> is, it, no. Is it really just so, boring to you? <laughs> No, it's really not that. Um, because I agree, fighter is such a great clean slate for just making a a wonderful adventurer. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, oh, you know what? I did play a fighter in our one shot. I played an arcane fighter. Oh did yes, I? yeah, you played an eldritch knight in yeah, the I an knight. in the in the, that will be... the episode two. That will be the one time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if we ever was, go back to Because it was a one hour game. Um, <laughs> it's just... It's so... I'm just not a martial player. You like magic a little bit too much. And the, the weird thing about that is I love monks. But okay. it's not because they're martial. It's because they are like mystical if that okay. makes sense okay like when i play a monk i'm just thinking like i'm a jedi the whole time mm. you know what i mean you have you have this inner strength that's mystical right it, because yeah. because that's the thing with monks is like there's always that bit of like key that's helping you do magical type things so mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like a straight up martial class yeah, and I I think that's really it. That's why the only fighter I played was a was an Eldritch Knight because I'm like, <laughs> I gotta have something interesting. Um, a lot of people really love the the um, uh, Battle Master. Mm -hmm. um, Battle Master's pr probably the best fighter subclass. Uh, well. It's As, strong. It it, de it depends on what you're going for in your fighter. If you want versatility. And damage, it's pretty much hits both of those. The 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 best fighter class is definitely um what's the shadow one? Oh, Echo Knight? Echo Knight. Echo Knight is fantastic. I yeah. Yeah. Well it 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 is uh, that would be really fun to see the difference, uh, because I, I I I have I've played the shadow the sh the Echo Knight up to wow when when did I think we were level twelve or, uh I thought we got to thirteen or fourteen with you some it was it was around there and yeah that was a lot of fun 
Yeah. Well, yes. Thank you, Matt Mercer, for that wonderful <laughs> subclass because it really was just yeah, the best. I mean, I mean, if we're just talking, you know, straight up D and D and like straight up game rules, then um, Battlemaster is definitely probably about as good as it gets. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's just not. It's just. It just doesn't grab me. You know what okay. I mean? Like uh-huh. when I make it. When I make a character in a fantasy world, I don't want to be a a a a guardsman turned adventurer. You know, I want mm-hmm. something mystical. I want something enchanting. I want something, you know, explicitly fantasy that's yeah. pulling my character along. I don't want it to feel like, um, you know. Oh, what was that game that came out a long time ago that was like, it was like a full open world. It was basically like The Witcher, but it was first person Uh and it was like real medieval. Like there was no magic. There was no nothing. It was just a medieval open world. It was like the King's Road or something like that. I don't know. The game when it came out did not do very well, but it. It, but people love it now, right? Because they came well, back it and gained, fixed it. It gained a good following because they 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 updated it, and um, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. It just like I if it, it doesn't feel very fantasy to me mm-hmm. to just be a fighter. Yeah, you know what I mean. It doesn't feel yeah. super cool. In no, my mind. no, and I and I totally get that. And and I know I have maybe mentioned this before, but the reason. Why I love fighters is is anytime I go to play a game, I don't know. There, there's something about that, like my my quote unquote like fantasy is actually a being the um, the innocent person, and <laughs> this is just really coming off as a little bit different. Huh? My fantasy is to be innocent. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I just saw your little smirk and I was just like, oh man, where is this going? <laughs> no, I really like it when I feel like I'm coming into this moment of, I have no idea what's going on. I'm oblivious and I get to experience all this weird magic things happening. Sure. And in, and in D&D, I actually really en- enjoy being kind of the human fighter. And I'm just kind of like, I'm here because I want to help. And everyone around me has the the crazy backstories and the 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 crazy moment that's that's going to come up in the campaign and the the plot twists and and they're going and struggling and and I just kind of like being on that end and and just getting to experience the the nuance the sure. the uh, I, I don't know that's kind of my I like being in the dark and it being revealed to me if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, I get it. I I mean, there is there is definitely a fun um a fun sort of dichotomy there between like you know, yeah, over here we've got the the uh the tiefling rogue, we've got the elf sorcerer, mm-hmm. we've got the gnome uh artificer and we've got the uh, um, uh, fire genasi warlock. Oh, and then there's the human fighter. <laughs> he's just here. I guess. He's here. He's drinking an ale, and he's just like, yeah. It's like I'm it's just like, trying to save the world. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I get that. That's fun. And you know, being that that sort of person in the group who's just like, whoa, you can do that. Yeah, <laughs> like like to everyone every time anything happens. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. There, it's like, there's just something yes, about it. You live in this world. How do you know nothing about magic? And you're like, I don't know. Dude, I'm just from like an old Dude, town I, I, down the road. We barely even have a temple. Like, there's no clerics there. <laughs> my 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 dad raised goats. Like, no no wizards ever gone there or walked through there. Like, yeah. Being in a fantasy world and and crazy magic is happening, mm-hmm. but you're the basic thing in that world. <laughs> yeah, well, it's almost like that. That's why uh, I'm gonna get real weeby here for a second. Yes, um, get weeby. That that's why uh, the those anime shows that are all about like this person lives in our world and then they die and they get transported to like a, a fantasy world, right? Is, right. Is it called like, Isekai? 
or I- yeah, isekai. isekai. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're they're like that's like a really popular thing now, and that's kind of the point is because it's so weird. It's like this weird double thing where it's like it's this person who knows nothing about magic or anything about this world, right. and they come into it, and uh, they're having to figure out everything along with the you know the viewer which is like that's also the reason harry potter was so mm-hmm. well done and well like received was because the main character is learning everything along with you as you're reading it if the main character was born into the wizard world we would all be left behind wondering what all this stuff that's was. a great storytelling device yeah tool yeah, is sure. like you you have your main character be someone that's learning along with the audience yeah but it also yeah. but it also like in in our case in D and rpgs it lends itself very well to these comedic moments too uh which are always really fun to have in the game where it's just like yeah uh what's a man what's a magic missile how does that work <laughs> like you just Dude, shoot you just, three arrows you or just shove or? fire out of your your hands yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's like the one dude who's like, oh, sweet, dude, look at this orb, and you just touch it, and everyone's like, no, no, <laughs> right? Like, you don't know. Um, uh, it's yes. great. It's really funny. Every D&D party needs one of those guys. <laughs> you know what's really weird is the reason you love that is also the reason I actually really love Warlock. Because hmm. I feel like, like Wizard is fun because you are learning it as the game goes, but like intellectually, right? You're learning it, but it does kind of require, uh, I feel like when you're a wizard, you kind of need to know a little bit as a character, like how magic works, because your character right. should know how magic works to even be to the point where they're a first level wizard. Mm-hmm. Cause you have to know, mm-hmm. right? Because it's so much about your knowledge when you're a sorcerer, it's like less so, but but it's more like you have a natural connection to it. So you just kind of feel how it works. You kind of mm-hmm. know how it works because you just feel it. With a warlock, to me, it's like you could just be a Joe Schmo who knows nothing about magic. And now suddenly, boom, you've got all these powers and you you don't even know what to do with any of it, right? It's like That's a cool way of thinking of one, yeah. So So I really like warlocks for that reason because it's like I don't know anything about Man, what's that book do? It makes mm. spells happen. That's cool. I've, I just cast things. I just think, and something happens. That's <laughs> that's kind of a fun idea for a flavor casting video that I might uh, do in the future. Is is uh, you play into the tropes of a fighter, but your on sheet character class is a warlock, and yeah. you you do like hexblade or something like that. I just think it's really fun. I mean, you're right. Playing that character is really fun. The character who's like figuring everything out while everyone else already knows what they're doing. Like mm-hmm. that's that's really fun to do. Um, and I think Warlock lends itself to that really well for magicy stuff. That's that's a great point, and I, and I like the way that you phrase that as well as like you you don't necessarily have a a least favorite class. You have classes that you don't necessarily get inspired with. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a great way of putting that. For for me, it's druid. I I have yeah. I have never been in the place where I'm I've been like, ooh, that's a really cool druid idea. I I would love to lean into like the, which is which is kind of weird because I love ranger and I love like naturey stuff. And I think if I ever were to play one, it would be leaning into like the wizardy side. Yeah. of one and so you're just you're connected with like nature the wise sage of the forest kind of yeah thing. exactly exactly in in fact it actually this is just a little side note uh i read the the 3.5th edition 3.5 edition adventure uh red hand of doom mm-hmm. and this is a spoiler but if if so if you all want to be spoiled for a, an adventure that was written like 15 years ago um there in in the in the woods by by um kind of where the adventure take place there's um these deep dark woods and there's a part where the adventures have to go there in order to find a lich that has been um basically living there for however long um the kind of the quote-unquote plot twist, I don't know if it was really a plot twist, but I just 
I just remember reading it and I was just like, whoa, that's a really cool idea. The Lich was a druid and he like, um, it was, it was, it was kind of different and, and, and weird because it was like a druid that went against quote unquote nature to stay alive. But he just had a lot of these, it was almost like a corruption of nature. So it was kind of like an opposite way. Um, but I, I, I feel like I would almost lean into it that, in a, you know, not in a lich way, but, or an evil way, but like lean into the, uh, studying to be like a wizard, but you are using nature. I don't know. Yeah. That could be really cool. I, 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 you know, Druid probably used to be like where Paladin is for me. Mm, yeah. Um, but lately I've been getting a lot of fun ideas with Druid and I've been seeing the the utility of Druid <laughs> and how like great of a class Druid is. And there's so many things that Druids can do that nobody else can do. Nobody. Like It's fair. Like even even with like cleric, like mm-hmm. you can play a sorcerer or a warlock with like a divine patron and get most of the cleric spells. Um, you know, so like stuff like that, it's like there's stuff, there's stuff that Druid does that like nobody else can do. Like if you don't have a Druid on your team, there's a lot of stuff that you just will never have access to Mm -hmm. because nobody else can do it. Yeah. Um, like, like tree walk and, uh, uh, oh yeah all of these different things like the what's the wind walking where you like turn into a cloud and travel for like miles in a day like and and don't get me wrong like I, i've never i've never once like look at a druid and just been like oh they just don't get very powerful i yeah. i think they're like probably one of the most powerful classes in the game i i, um, I really think that the fact that they're not very popular because of the way they feel to play mm-hmm. is what saves people from being like, oh my God, druids are so overpowered <laughs> because they are. <laughs> they, By the time yeah. you're a 20th level druid, you like you can't die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah. you can't. It's it's almost impossible to kill a 20th level druid because they can just keep wild shaping over and over and over and over and over. Yep. And just until... replenishing their So witch. unless you can kill them in one round <laughs> to all of their 180 hit points, um, then you're screwed. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of surprised more people haven't used druids as like their BBEG for that yeah. reason. Because well, that would be reason... quite an epic... That's another reason, like, they don't is because druids kind of feel so tied into this wise forest sage. Like, mm-hmm. if you if you are a druid, there are things that have to be true about you. And one of them is that you are in tune with nature as it is nature. meant to be. Mm-hmm. You can't be a super powerful druid and, like, go against nature. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't your powers would be revoked like you just wouldn't be able to access them it would be a way a way of making like a druid cult that basically is like society is taking over the world and they're destroying nature we need to take back our society that would be kind of the only way is to just create a a a big bad evil that's just like um all cities need to need to burn so that uh, life can regrow there. <laughs> you know, that's a, a great idea for a campaign. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know, I, this was a while ago. Um, the, the one shot I ran for, for you and, uh, your family, th- that was kind of my, like, if, if my idea, if I ever continued that campaign, that like that half orc that you all fought, Cause he was like a, I think he was a ranger is kind of what I based him off of. He had like, he was like a ranger druid. Um, but anyway, that, that's cool. I, I, I like the way of, of phrasing that. Yeah. And, and, and druid has always kind of been. Yeah. I've just had, I've just had a few ideas with druid lately that it's like, oh, that could be really cool. Even one of them is like mainly druid, but also like a little bit of cleric and stuff. Um, and it would basically be like, just all I do is support and heal and help like that would be a great character for that and the other one was my like my spores druid which you know i got to play for a little while 
I would love to do a full campaign with that character. But that that was a cool idea for sure, which is which is really funny um, because I've been playing uh, Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous. Yeah, and one of the mythic classes that you can go in that game is the yeah. the swarm. The swarm. Yep. <laughs> and it's, but it's but the, it's pretty strictly evil, right? It's evil. very, very, very evil. And in fact, it's it's like the one that is like literally everyone is like, "What are you doing?" You you <laughs> and and all your companions wind up leaving you. You're basically eating everybody, like because it's neutral evil, right? It's like just it's just nihilism, like just consume all and just become nothing like all become one and so like yeah the point is like you don't even take a side you're not even on lawful or chaotic you're just in the middle so everyone yeah everyone that is on a side even if it's a bad side even the lawful evil and chaotic evil people are like what are you doing dude like pick a side like fight for something everything is (laughs) what are you (laughs) it is it's literally like the nihilistic (laughs) um but apparently it's it's in the game and you can do that um well Thank you so much for uh, coming down that uh, rabbit trail with me. I, yeah. I love to hear your thoughts about rabbit trail. D&D. Clash trail? A rabbit hole? Yeah. Rabbit hole? You know, maybe maybe uh, we can go further into this and just be like, what's your favorite subclass? What's your least favorite subclass? You know, <gasps> yeah. what's your, but next time it might be, what's your favorite class? And we may talk about. I thought we already did favorite class. That's what I was saying. I thought we did favorite class already. We, you know, we've been we've been doing thirteen of these, and over the course of like two years, so <laughs> yep. Sometimes they are kind of all blending together. But speaking of blending together, uh, back <laughs> in the uh, world, <laughs> great segue. Back in the world of of um, Reign of Winter. Yes. Yeah. So we are playing. Reign of Winter, which is a a Bobby Yaga uh, campaign. Last last we left off um, was at the Pale Tower. We had successfully defeated the uh, apprentice there, but the the owner, the uh, the Vadvika, um, I believe is how it's pronounced in in Pathfinder. Um, was not there and we were actually pretty thankful because that apprentice kind of kicked our butts um yeah i remember you talking about uh dropping all the stuff from the ceiling and uh, exactly two of you almost died yes uh i went down um the bard and the wizard went down um (laughs) so it was it was really close um but that was when uh, Nixia kind of was was able to get over to me because of the difficult terrain that was going on and got, got me back up because I had one health potion, got me up, and then I was able to make it over to, to Ross, our wizard, uh, because healing words a bonus action, I was able to use my action to kind of dig to get him out of the rubble and then bonus action heal him. We got him up and then it was like a loot episode. We went on a loot spree. <laughs> there was so much loot in this tower. The whole pale tower. Yeah, the the upper, I mean, cuz there were three rooms up there. Uh two rooms uh, had had stuff in them. One was kind of a rundown room and then one was where the apprentice stayed. And then uh one of the rooms um was where the 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 witch stayed in. Um, and she, there was also a vault in there. And if you recall, that's, we, when we opened the vault, that's where our barbarian got cursed and lost some, um, some constitution. Luckily it was only, he lasted for a day, but we didn't know that at the time. Yep. Um, going back, the reason why we were a little bit skeptical, yeah. where we were nervous about the vault uh-huh. was because Hatch, the adorable, um, little guy with a button on his hat had warned uh-huh. us that there was something in the vault that was cursed. Oh, uh, okay. So we were being very cautious about what we did. We as a party thought that was the curse. The barbarian getting hit and then like his con- constitution going down. So we were like, okay, so we might be okay with the items. So we wound <laughs> up taking everything. We were, we were, uh, we were, there it was a lot of discussion going on. We were, we were doing a lot of loot, and we I was like, 
I was very much of the opinion of like, we need to like identify all of these things. Like we don't know which is real, which is not. And then not Nixia was on the same side as me. Um, the the wizard and the the barbarian i think were kind of like well i think that was the curse so it was a long discussion um to just kind of wrap that up it was later on we had a ring of regeneration is a very nice magical item it's the one where you you heal basically passively like every minute yep. uh, if, if you like get an arm cut off it can grow back the next time, and, and our wizard had it, the next time he took damage, he took an extra 1d4 damage. And the ring is actually the exact opposite. Every time you take damage, you have to roll an extra 1d4 damage. Oh, wow. So it doesn't actually regenerate you at all? Nope. It's just... Wow. Wow. And it was it was really kind of comedical um, because after the fight, the wish was like, okay, I, I, I go and take the ring off. And, and Dip was like, oh, you take the ring off? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So it was, oh. we were like, oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I, I think it's part of the curse. It's either like you don't want to take it off or you just can't take it off. Um, wow. so we'll, we'll have to tackle that when it, when it comes time. Luckily he's a wizard and I wonder if remove curse would even do anything. Maybe remove I, curse would at least let you take it off. I, I don't know. And the thing is, is as far as I'm aware, um, up to this point, uh, Ross, our wizard, whose character's name is Sorian, ha- has not talked about it, has not told us. And, um, I don't know if it's one of those things where we can. Is it like a? Is there like a dispel magic? Do we yeah. have to go do like greater restoration? I I don't know. I've yeah. I've never really honestly dealt with cursed items before. I I uh, would think it would have to be a like remove curse wouldn't fix the item, but it would at least let you like take it off. I would think that that's a fair point, or maybe it like somehow dims it for a certain amount of yeah. time. It doesn't necessarily take the curse away, but it lets you get it off. Yeah. I don't know. Well, when we cross that bridge, I will definitely let you know. But as of right now, uh, our wizard is not having necessarily a great time with that ring. It was a real bummer, though, because I, we were all were like, a ring of regeneration at level four? Oh, my gosh. This is Things amazing. are looking up. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, well, we did a lot of looting. Uh, there's a lot of scrolls. Our wizard is having a great time, um, except he just oh, doesn't yeah. have the money to get him into his spell book yet. Yep. Um, or the paper. He ha- we have the money, but we don't necessarily have the paper and ink. Um, we went back to Wellsby at Nadia's house. Wellsby. Nadia is the Wellsby. Nadia is the NPC that has been has befriended us. Um, she. Uh, her husband died a couple of years ago, um, and unfortunately, it was her. Um, she wanted revenge for her daughter, who was cursed and yeah. put in a doll. You right? Recall. Yeah, I remember that. And she went with you to the tower, right? She she was. She did not go uh, with us up into the tower. She actually stayed in the courtyard waiting for us. Gotcha. Um, and when we made it back, we stayed with her at, at her house. And she has. She basically told us that um, she can take us to the next town and get us to the capital city um, of this area. Um, and she's going to take um, her two boys. She has two boys. They are. They're pretty young. I believe. Like, I don't know. I, I think they're about you know six, seven, or eight around that age frame. So they're okay. pretty young. She is basically her quote unquote cover has kind of been blown uh, sure. being here. She, she, she's helped us, but also she does not like the fact that her daughter, you know, uh, people bet- basically betrayed her. She's, you know, they told Nadia that they, she could potentially get her daughter back. And that was a very sad end. Um, yeah. So she's going to go with us and she's going to take us back up to lead the way up to the capital. It is going to be a 10-day journey. So, 
10 days, you know, like in, in uh, the Forgotten Realms, that's a, that's a week, a yep. 10 day, yep. um, nine or 10, depending on the weather. Um, and so forgive me if I'm kind of going to be a little bit jumbly here because the, you know, this was the transition moment where all the days are kind of blending into one. Yeah. Um, the really cool thing about this, this journey though, was this was kind of the first time that we as a party got to get to know each other. Um, you know, which was kind of, which was kind of cool and, and a lot different from, from your campaign you know, so we were we were using the days to kind of be able to role play, um, talk about, uh, you know, our past, what we're doing, our goals. Why are we here? Do we like the fact that we're going to be uh, potentially freeing Baba Yaga? You know, it, it's it, it's kind of interesting because we've even had some role play with with Nadia about the the people here. And I wish I could remember the ex exact phrase that she used because it was really cool. But she essentially was kind of like, it doesn't, because because I know my character, Dar went up and asked her, like, would it be a good thing? Like, right now, the, the witch that's in charge um, has kind of locked Baba Yaga away, but she kind of wants to take over the rest of the globe at this point. Um, and it was kind of like, and, and Nadia was kind of like, look, it doesn't really matter to us who's in charge, because it's going to suck either way. Right now it sucks, and if if Baba Yaga came back and, and brought a new daughter, you know, no queen has ever been, like, good, right? In fact, Dip was kind of explaining this area is actually a, a neutral evil area. It's, it's not a lawful evil area where it's like everyone is kind of, there's a hierarchy, and they're usually always trying to get power, and they're trying to, to manipulate each other, or you know, just out clever each other or just gain more power or chaotic evil where they're just running around murdering everybody. It's, he was explaining it in the sense of it's just, it, it's just been evil for so long. It's just a way of life. The, these people are just. Interesting. It's just bad. It's just a bad time. It's just a bad time. There's um, no, there's like, that almost makes me think of like, Barovia a little bit because it's almost like it's just bad there's no there it's not it's there's no like law or anything that it's not like like the people there aren't necessarily under like a I mean they kind of are but it's not necessarily a dictatorship like each of their own towns kind of rules themselves mm -hmm. there's like a noble family that kind of rules over that area but it's also yeah. not just like straight up everybody just kills each other and you just have to hide in your homes like right there are places like that but mm -hmm. it's just bad there's just mm -hmm. no good there there's no there's no light at the end of the tunnel there's no hope You'll get like NPCs that are like chaotic evil or, sure, of or course. lawful evil, but the area itself is like a kind of like, you know, when you think of the hells, right? Being yeah. a lawful evil place, the abyss being a chaotic evil place. This place is just a neutral evil. So it, it was just interesting getting the, the feel of like, even just how the people kind of view this Be, and it's a lot of dilemma for and it's caused a, a dilemma for kind of us as we're all chatting you know my character is kind of under the opinion of like well hey maybe we can make a deal with baba yaga right if if we are here to like set her free maybe we can make a deal and and maybe cause things to change um ethan the barbarian is is even kind of of this opinion of like I don't know if we even should. I think we should just go straight for the queen and just kind of dismant try and dismantle this, right? Um, and so we all kind of ha have our different opinions, and it was we got to role play that. Um, as the days go on, there was some really fun encounters. Uh, one of the first days was we came across a uh, a, a cabin out here, kind of in the the frozen wastes, uh, and a. Okay lady came out and uh was waving at us and she was kind of in a panic uh and we we talked to her and she said that her husband had gone out that morning she had to go gathering and he hadn't come back and she was getting very worried about him 
And so we agreed to go see if we can help uh, or at least find the husband. The really fun thing about this particular story is Dip posted the art. And I'm going to have the art come up some here, somewhere here. Okay. Uh, and Sarah, being the uh, artist that she is, she looks at the art and she squints. And she goes, oh, I don't like this. I don't know if I trust her. And we're all like, why? And she's like, that's a tail. And a little sliver, and I'll, I might have to show you the, I, I may have actually shown you. Have I shown you the artwork? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. So uh, if you look on where her oh, kind wow. of foot is, um, yep. is a little, it, it looks like a foxtail. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sarah noticed that and basically was like, I don't want to metagame dip, but can I do like some sort of perception check? And Dip allowed it, and I think he actually gave her inspiration for it because she, she, because he was like, I even photoshopped it, and I didn't even notice that. And, and when I saw it, I, I thought it was like just her boot or something, so I didn't even think twice yeah, about it. I thought it. she was when I first glanced. I thought she was like mid walking, so her left foot was like up, and that right, was her left right. foot. But Sarah spotted it, uh, and because of that, she she was uh, she had a perception check, and she noticed it. Um, we learned that she is actually a type of fey creature, mm -hmm. um, and essentially they're 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 kind of hollow inside, um, but they're they're kind of like this this fey. It was really interesting, um, but that that was, we just learned that she was a fey. She wasn't a a uh, you know a human or anything, but we still agreed to to help her because you know we don't notice anything that she says that she's gonna you know attack us or anything like that she seemed genuine enough uh and so we go and find the husband who is at a nearby cave um and he comes out and you may actually look into creatures as this one because i'm going to have the art come up he is covered in moss um and he immediately attacks us um and we take him out um non-lethally and we were able to, and I believe it was actually Nixia that was kind of able to target the moss. Th this moss had a very interesting mechanic. Oh, it's it's mold. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yes, it's it's mold. It's a type of mold in Pathfinder. M Mind slaver mold. Yeah, indeed. Um, thank you. the The cool thing about this is Dip said whenever you go to hit the creature, uh, it can make a deck save, and if it succeeds it'll hit the person and not the mold. So they're kind of two different entities. Wow. Whoa, that's different. So like if it's on the shoulder and you go to like hit, it'll, it'll move. Like away. Yeah, it, it's so it's creepy and it was person. just like, oh, oh it just made your skin crawl. So it's a kind of a fun little mechanic. So they were like two different entities that weird. we fought. Um, but we wind up saving the, the husband, to bringing him back to the, um, the wife. She was very happy. They fed us lunch, and then we moved on our way. Uh, a fun little note uh, that Dip explains. If the husband had died, this woman would have been grief-stricken and would have attempted to charm one of us to stay with her, not in a sense of um, malice or anything of that, but in a sense of being afraid to be alone and it was it was wow. kind of a kind of a it would be like a even more sad ending it did note as well that the charm would not have been strong enough to overpower what the black uh knight gave us the black rider excuse me um so it would have been a kind of a fun thing to role play um this kind of needing to stay but at the same time needing to complete your mission but luckily, that did not happen. <laughs> the, the husband was saved, and they were happy. I mean, as much as you can be in this place, and we kept going. Interesting. Another day happens um, where one of the boys, uh, one of the children, wander off um, to go get um, some some firewood, uh, and he hasn't come back. And so we go and search for him, and. We happened upon him just as wolves were setting upon him. Uh, luckily, we happened here just in time, and we managed to defend him from the wolves. And 
we I think we killed a few, but most ran away. Again, these were very special rules uh, in the sense that they kind of have adapted to this area and have this fey essence about them. And they only leave a trail if they choose to. So like paw prints and things like that. So we weren't able to follow cool. them into the woods. Um, we, we learned that our barbarian from this encounter, it was interesting because uh, our barbarian did a, an intimidation check at these wolves instead of an animal handling check. Uh, so it's a little, it was just a little bit, something a little bit different, but we learned in the course of this travel and kind of just with role play, we learned that our barbarian was raised by wolves. Whoa, that's cool. Just like the, just like in the books. It was yeah, kind of really a neat cool. little thing. There, There's a lot more to it. Uh, he was essentially raised by wolves to a certain point. Uh, and then he winds up getting captured and, and enslaved. And that's how he kind of made it to um, to kind of his his backstory intertwines with Nixia's. Um, and maybe one of these days we'll get around to explaining everyone's backstory. But that was kind of a neat yeah. little neat little like tidbit that happened that we all were like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's that's really cool. That's a great idea. Yeah, he he's a half orc and he was he was raised by wolves. It was it was really kind of interesting we come to this next day and it was this was kind of the the thing i had teased last week where we had a beach episode <laughs> yeah <laughs> so how do you have a beach episode in the middle of a freezing winter well i will tell you <laughs> okay so this is actually a really cool thing um and it um you know i'll probably talk i'll talk about my feelings after and just from a story perspective let's talk about our feelings jake it, it was just feelings. a really cool moment so we were all you know we at this point it's been like a week into the journey of just frozen wastes mm -hmm. and we come across suddenly we kind of up this hill and as far as really we could see like miles it is like a a spring hot summer day there's grass about, we can hear water, there's trees in bloom. Um, it, it, it just kind of, Whoa. when Dip was explaining it, I was like, oh, this is, this is an illusion. Yeah, it's totally fake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I was kind of like, we all stop, we all kind of freak out. And then Nadia explains, there are druids in this area that are essentially trying to bring back summer. Um, there, I believe I mentioned there is a kind of an uprising group, but there, there are druids that are essentially have powerful magic that they go to these areas to bring in these pockets of summer. And essentially it's a pocket of summer. Um, and so they overcome in these certain areas, winter's grasp. Now it does wow. not last forever. And Nadia explains that it, it will be gone probably in the next couple of hours. Oh, whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so she was like, enjoy it while it lasts, and so we did. <laughs> it was it was really fun because we were we were all like, you know, we got to change the music, the background music, to being like, um, you know, instead of this icy wind, it was suddenly like birds and water and streams, um, and when Dip explained, like we we came across these streams and like these these almost ponds. Uh, I role played um, because my character actually took some soap from the barracks at the Pale Tower, um, and I was kind of like, "You, you know, we all should just enjoy this. Why don't we all take a bath? When was the last time we all took a bath?" And so we totally had a beach episode. Um, we're kind of like just going back and forth. Um, there's a there's a couple great teasing moments with uh, Dara, my character, and Nixia. Um, and who's basically like, no, I'm going to go have some privacy. And Dara was like, yeah, I'm sure you will. And he turns invisible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mm, um, <laughs> I mean, if they've been flirting up into that point, that's a different thing. But if that's just the first time he flirts with her, that's no. a little, oh, uh. <laughs> it was, e everyone was about, it was just basically I'm a throwaway just, joke. I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just a very fun moment we all it, and and that's i think what the coolest thing about this little moment was was because we all kind of just got to take a step back from 
um the dread the the dread and the oppression i guess you could say of the of the place uh so if you could kind of think of it it would be like uh since you kind of brought up barovia it would be like a moment where we get back to the um other plane or the the shadow yeah. fell kind yeah. of seeps away in this say, little pope. A moment where the clouds part for like three hours and you actually yeah. get some sunlight. Yeah. Exactly. So it it was just a you know, we we all role play like we we kind of, you know, took off our our bundles of winter clothes and so we're able to kiss kind because of, it it like the temperature got up to I think dip was like it's it got up to like sixty degrees. Nice. Um so it got warm and we were enjoying it. Dara was playing music. Um, but after some time, it wound up uh, getting back to being winter again. We basically kind of left it behind us because um, it went on for a couple miles. Um, and so we were out of it before it kind of disappeared. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of the, the latest the latest one. Um, That's really cool. Yeah, the the. Um, it's really fun role uh, role playing with with uh, Nadia and like their their little family along with the adventure party. Yeah, you know, because they've they've actually added a lot to this. Essentially, the whole time we've been role playing, like Nixia has been like training with one of the boys with like his his sticks and stuff. There was a moment where uh, Dara got to kind of teach some instruments to the other one, and and it's just kind of been this really fun kind of back and forth. We've learned a lot from Nadia. She's been kind of uh, going over how you kind of scavenge for things in the in the woods in kind of a frozen waste. Um, I think there was actually one time where we learned that there's this local tree uh, from the area that we get to kind of. That's kind of been a lot of our uh, our food because actually, come to think of it, forgive me for being a little jumbled. On one of the first days. Uh, we we actually had a night encounter where these evil free creatures came fake creatures came out of nowhere and attacked us um, with a curse. Uh, we all saved except for Nixia, who was carrying all our food. So everything that we had uh, bought for rations uh, got spoiled. <laughs> oh no! Uh, on one of the first days. Uh, that I just wow. now remember that. So this whole time of us traveling for like a week up to this point, uh, we've had, had to scavenge. And luckily, Nadia, Nadia also is a ranger, so she has good berry. That's pretty dope. That's yeah. uh, that's that's really fun. I, I really like the the travel stuff. That's something that you know I've been missing a little bit in my campaign, where it's like, oh, we need to go do this thing. Okay, sweet, we're here now. Like. Because it's all in one city, right? So there's like, mm -hmm. there's no travel time. If we really do have to, um, it's very interesting in this campaign because you have to make the role play moments. If that makes sense for me, it's right, like right. it doesn't come up naturally because it's not like you're just walking and chilling out and then it's like, oh, suddenly two of you are alone because you're watching the campfire for the night and it's like no that doesn't happen it's like no if if you want to have a conversation with somebody you got to write it down make sure you remember you want to have that conversation and then engage it like when you have your off time um because you have days of off time so there's plenty of time to have those conversations and that role yeah. play but you have to like start it yourself it doesn't just come mm -hmm. up naturally if that makes sense that is interesting because it's kind of like uh, on the third day I go and visit yeah, this person exactly. or something like yeah. that. Yep. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I can get so yeah, it's it definitely different feels for each. Um, the the last thing I will say, and we'll we'll end it on the last thing that happened last uh, last session. Mm -hmm. We we happened upon some old ruins that were even before. Um, really Baba Yaga had come into this area. Ooh, so there wow. were old ruins and we, we came across a, a haunting in a temple, yeah. um, oh, which is Pathfinder is, has like special hauntings. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, we learned that basically this, this place, um, there were temples to Desna, um, uh, or the temple okay. of Desna here. Um, essentially the, <laughs> Uh, when Baba Yaga came in to essentially kill everyone in this area, the priests of this 
uh, temple had turned against their good ways and against their God and uh, essentially made a deal to rally everyone together um, to turn over the entire town. But it turns out that it really was for it's for no good because it, it came in and just everyone died anyway. Um, so they tried to make a deal, but it didn't turn out to be um, work. <laughs> they got, they got backstabbed literally. Um, so we came across that haunting. Um, but that, and then, uh, that is where I will kind of end. I guess I end on a sour note there. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> the, right. we'll come back to, uh, when we get back to, to our side of things, cause next week will probably be Curtis. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to when we, we came across an, another family who we kind of saved from a bunch of fey creatures again, as you have noticed that this is a very fey heavy yeah. campaign. <laughs> Getting there. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So we did some more saving, but that's where I'll pick Wonderful. it up next time. Thank you so much for listening to my story, Curtis. I hope that was I'm always that wasn't to too listen. jumbled, was it? <laughs> no, that was great. It was very put together. Oh man. Yeah, so that that's been kind of the interesting thing of just travel and kind of this day something happened and then travel a little more and this day something happened and then we had yeah. this campfire meeting and you know but I like it. I'm looking forward to getting back to your campaign. You got any uh, little teases for next time? Um, well, we are back out on uh, on the prowl on a mission, and mm. uh, we'll see where that takes us. We'll have to talk about it next time. Okay, okay. Things things are going on in the city. Things that don't look good. <laughs> things that don't look good. The uh, all the people who hated the queen at first are starting to kind of look a little bit right. We'll see how that goes. Oh oh uh oh uh oh. Well, that's my theory anyway. I will say there's no okay. confirmations or anything yet, but um, that's just a theory. <laughs> a D and D Pathfinder theory. Thanks for Wonderful. listening. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for Thank listening you. to the Backyard Tabletop. We uh, we really appreciate you uh, just, just doing that. Uh, you know, if you like what we do here, like, uh, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. If you have any uh, questions that you would like us to talk about for the first part of the podcast, we would uh, love to hear one. And uh, my name is Jacob. You know, I don't I don't really say this. Uh, lightly it, it takes a while for me to like somebody but um i like you guys you're cool okay thank you you're doing a good job oh not you're you. talking to them sorry yeah not sorry. you the, I, the people watching I'm, i yeah. know i'm still yeah. working on yeah. on being really being liked by you mm -hmm. yeah you'll get there eventually <laughs> my name's curtis <laughs> and we will see you next time on the backyard tabletop good night everybody <laughs> what is this, a talk show? <laughs> <laughs>